Dustin Poirier, who was last out in December of last year when he lost his world title fight against current lightweight incumbent Charles Oliveira, has been rumored to be moving to welterweight recently, and if his coach Mike Brown is to be believed, that could soon become a reality for the American top team fighter. Today, we're talking about Poirier's potential, move to welterweight, plus other UFC bits and pieces so don't go anywhere. Let's get straight into it. What did his coach, Mike Brown, have to say? It has been suggested recently that Poirier, who is a pretty big lightweight, could well benefit from a move up a division to the UFC's welterweight ranks. And if he does decide to change it up, his coach, Mike Brown, a former fighter himself, is definitely on board. Brown was WEC champion and now plies his trade as a coach over at ATT in Florida. And he believes Poirier natural weight class is actually welterweight, as opposed to lightweight. Poirier actually started his MMA career as a featherweight, which is where he first came across Conor McGregor, and Brown recently said that he thinks he is plenty big for welterweight. He also made reference to the fact that the diamond is finding it harder and harder to reach lightweight, and went on to say he could be a better welterweight than a lightweight. Time will tell, but he's definitely not small for a welterweight. Poirier has been a perennial challenger in the UFC's lightweight division, but stepping up to welterweight would be no walk in the park as that division is currently being dominated by one of the best to ever do it in Kamaru Usman. He's currently ranked number two in lightweight, and depending on which way the Gaethje Oliveira fight goes later this year, he could be in for another title shot sooner rather than later if he wins his next fight at lightweight. Do you think Poirier would benefit from a move to welterweight? Let us know below. What else did Brown and Poirier have to say then? Well, Poirier has made no secret of the fact that he sees his future as a welterweight. And the idea has again been floated following his loss to Brazilian Oliveira. He was talking about how difficult the whole process of getting down to lightweight has become since he's gotten a bit older. He said, I don't know if I'm going to make the cut again. I might never fight at 155 pounds again. I don't know the future. I could have cut a few more pounds. I could have come in at 152 on this fight. My cut went so smooth, I felt great. He made no bones about the fact that although he felt he could have have cut a bit more, he doesn't know if he wants to go through a training camp like that again, as he's always hungry. We get it. It cannot be good for the body, nor the mind, to go through a training camp for a world title fight on minimal calories. Whilst a move to welterweight wouldn't be an easy one in terms of the stiff competition in that division, it would certainly be a much easier to train and go through a full camp while not having to worry so much about making weight. He would have a full 15 extra pounds going through a welterweight training camp, which would make a ton of difference. Give us your thoughts on Poirier's last fight against Oliveira. So who might we see the diamond up against next? Stay tuned to find out. It has been rumored that Dustin could go up against Conor McGregor for the fourth time once the Irishman is back from the broken leg he sustained in his last fight against Poirier. The pair first met in the featherweight division back in 2014, and then again twice last year, with Poirier coming out on top in both 2021 fights. But the Louisiana native has categorically denied he's interested in another bout against McGregor, saying the door is closed. However, where Conor McGregor is concerned, given the amount of money he makes from his opponents, you can probably never rule it out. Poirier has talked in the past about facing Nate Diaz at welterweight, who also holds a win over McGregor himself. There was talk of Diaz potentially retiring earlier this year, and when asked about those rumors, Poirier replied, I don't believe that. Nate, he's got that dog in him. He's going to fight forever. We'll see what happens, but I believe he has a lot of fight left in him, but no telling what his plans are and his exit game or whatever's going on. I want the fight, and I think he wants it as well. Poirier was also the subject of a call-out from Colby Covington, following the latter's recent win over Jorge Masvidal recently. And that is a fight we love. Who do you think Dustin goes up against next? Give us your thoughts below. What did Poirier have to say about Covington's call-out then? Let's discuss. Poirier was on hand to address Covington's most recent call out and he seemed to immediately pour cold water over any suggestion of a showdown with Colby. He acknowledged the call out, but seems completely uninterested in the fight, which is strange seeing as he seems set on heading up the welterweight. Dustin actually called the Covington comments cute, and whilst he did concede that it would be a big fight, he made reference to the fact that Colby obviously has 
designs on fighting again for the welterweight crown, so he will need to be fighting welterweight contenders, which he said he currently is not. He said, I don't know what I'm doing. If I'm going to welterweight, if I'm staying at 155 pounds, we'll see. It is what it is. It's quite strange a stance for Poirier, who would usually jump at the chance of a fight, especially after being insulted by a man like Covington, who took time out to not only fire shots at the diamond, but his wife and his daughter too. He didn't directly address Covington's ugly remarks, but he did say that it wasn't his style. We get it, Dustin. Colby isn't many people's cup of tea, to be fair. Poirier seemed to reiterate his desire to fight Nate Diaz, who still seems to be the one of the most sought-after fighters on the entire UFC roster, as patchy as his record is. Who do you see coming out on top should he get his dream fight against Diaz? We're talking Patty Pimblett next. Stay tuned. Patty the Batty Pimblett returned to action this weekend at UFC Fight Night London and scored an impressive submission win against Kazula Vargas on the Tom Aspinall vs. Alexander Volkov card. That takes his UFC record to 2-0, and oh, and hype is certainly building around the popular young Scouser. But all the talk before the fight surrounding an altercation Pimblett had with Georgian fighter Ilya Tupuria, who confronted Patty following comments he made on Twitter regarding Russia bombing Georgia back in 2008, Tapuria, who had his whole team with him, felt confident enough to confront Pimblet, who was on his own, but didn't even land a punch on the English fighter. Instead, Pimblet picked up a bottle of hand sanitizer and threw it straight at the Georgian, bouncing it off his head, in his own words. Tapuria has since called Pimblet out, and there's no reason why that fight couldn't go ahead, as they can both fight at either featherweight or lightweight. Pimblet talked about the incident at Matt Serra's UFC Unfiltered podcast, and referred referred to Tapuria as Mr. Hand Sanitizer. It will be interesting to see if this one goes ahead, as it would definitely be Pimblet's most difficult UFC fight to date. Do you see this one going ahead? Let us know below. And finally, we're talking Tom Aspinall. Don't go anywhere. Aspinall, who was top of the bill at the London event this past weekend, did not disappoint fans, scoring a super impressive submission win over the ever-dangerous Alexander Volkov in the very first round. Aspinall, whose father was one of the UK's very first BJJ black belts, used his superior jiu-jitsu to full effect, winning via straight arm lock. The win took Aspinall's UFC record to 5-0, and oh, and he will now have most of the UFC's heavyweight roster looking over their shoulders after another impressive win. The sky is now the limit for the Manchester fighter, who trains out of the same Liverpool gym as UFC middleweight Darren Till. Although he's a heavyweight, he moves like a middleweight, or even a welterweight, picking his shots expertly. Volkov was no match whatsoever for Aspinall, who has made a huge splash in the division, and if he carries on the same rich vein of form, it will be only a matter of time before he fights for the title. He will need to get past people such as Stipe Miocic and Tai Tuivasa before he gets a crack at Francis, but there's no reason why the big Englishman shouldn't be aiming for the top, given the fantastic start to his UFC career. As always, thanks for tuning in today, and remember to stop by next time for some more fun and games. Also, why not do us a favor by liking, sharing, and subscribing to our channel? Bye, guys.